uh, humans don't use reinforcement learning is maybe what I've, <laughs> as I've said it all. I, I think they do something different, which is, yeah, you experience, so reinforcement learning is a lot worse than I think the average person thinks. <laughs> <laughs> reinforcement learning is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens that uh, everything that we had before it is much worse. <laughs> Uh, because previously we're just imitating people, so it has all these issues. Um, so in reinforcement learning, say you're working with, uh, you're solving a math problem, because it's very simple. You're given a math problem, and you're trying to find a solution. Um, now, in reinforcement learning, you will try a, lots of things in parallel first. So uh, you're given a problem, you try hundreds of different attempts. And these attempts can be complex, right? They can be like, oh, let me try this, let me try that, this didn't work, that didn't work, etc. And then maybe you get an answer. And now you check the back of the book, and you see, okay, the correct answer is this. And then you can see that, okay, this one, this one, and that one got the correct answer, but these other 97 of them didn't. So literally what reinforcement learning does is it goes to the ones that worked really well. And every single thing you did along the way, yeah. every single token gets upweighted of like, do more of this. The problem with that is, I mean, people will say that uh, your estimator has high variance, but what I mean, it's just noisy. It's noisy. <laughs> uh, so basically it kind of almost assumes that every single little piece of the solution that you made that right at the right answer was the correct thing to do, which is not true. Like you may have gone down the wrong alleys until you arrived at the right solution. Every single one of those incorrect things you did, as long as you got to the correct solution, will be upweighted as do more of this. It's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> It's noise. You've done all this work only to find a single, at the end you get a single number of like, oh, you did correct. And, and based on that, you weigh that entire trajectory as like upweight or downweight. And so you're, the way I like to put it is you're sucking supervision through a straw uh, because you've done all this work that could be a minute of rollout and you're, you're like sucking the bits of supervision of the final reward signal <laughs> through a straw and you're like putting it, you're like, uh, you're basically like, um, yeah, you're broadcasting that across the entire trajectory and using that to upweigh or downweigh that trajectory. It's just too, crazy. Uh, a human would never do this. Number one, a human would never do hundreds of rollouts. Right. Uh, number two, when a person sort of finds a solution, they will have a pretty complicated process of review of like, okay, I think these parts that I did well, these parts I did not do that well, I should probably do this or that, and they think through things. There's nothing in current LLMs that does this. There's no equivalent of it. Um, but I do see papers popping out that are trying to do this because it's obvious to everyone in the field. Yeah. So I kind of see as like the first imitation learning actually, by the way, was extremely surprising and miraculous and amazing that we can uh, fine-tune by imitation on humans. Um, and that was incredible. Because in the beginning, all we had was base models. Base models are autocomplete. Uh, and it wasn't obvious to me at the time, uh, and I had to learn this, and uh, the paper that uh, like blew my mind was Instruct GPT, because it pointed out that, hey, you can take the pre-trained model, which is autocomplete, and if you just fine-tune it on text that looks like conversations, the model will very rapidly adapt to become very conversational, and it keeps all the knowledge from pre-training. And this blew my mind because I didn't understand that it's just like stylistically can adjust so quickly and become an assistant to a user through, through just a few loops of fine-tuning on that kind of data. It was very miraculous to me that, that that worked. So incredible, and that was like two years, three years of work. And now came RL. And RL allows you to do a bit better than just imitation learning, right? Because you, you can't have these re, um, reward functions and you can hill climb on the reward functions. And so some problems have just correct answers. You can hill climb on that without getting expert trajectories to imitate. So that's amazing. And the model can also discover solutions that a human might never come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is incredible. And yet, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we need, we need more. And so I saw a paper from Google yesterday that tried to have this reflect and review idea in mind. Memory bank paper or something? I don't know. I've actually seen a few papers along these lines. So I expect there to be some kind of a major update to how we do algorithms for LLMs uh, coming in that realm. And then I think we need three or four or five more. <laughs> <laughs> um, something like that. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks. <laughs>